Live from the heart of America, I'm Steve Drury, your soldier of truth. I am the tip of the spear against all of this nonsense out there, ready to fight for you from the foxhole of freedom. And please, please, my friends, remember to think while it's still legal around here. This is the Steve Gruber Show. Here are three big things you need to know right now. Number one, what is your favorite Halloween candy and how sweet are the Detroit Lions right now? Yes, we have to have some conversations that are not so damn serious sometimes. Number two. Are you willing to give up passwords and go with facial recognition, better known as pass keys? Give that some thought. I'll be getting back to that. And number three, weakness, specifically American weakness, has led to a pair of major wars. And those wars lead back to Joe Biden and his incompetence and the incompetence of the people that are around him. Look, we can debate what Russia would or would not do, but make no mistake, the first major incursion by Vladimir Putin when he invaded and annexed Crimea came when Barack Obama was in the White House. He rolled into Ukraine when Joe Biden was sleeping in the Oval Office or under his bed in Delaware. And Hamas launched its unprecedented attacks on unarmed civilians, slaughtering Israelis and anyone else in their way during the current president, the weakest in modern American history, Joe Biden. Neither Jimmy Carter or Gerald Ford would have allowed this on their watch. Reagan, Clinton, and both Bushes, they'd go without saying. They would have all stood up for America and during Donald Trump's time in the office. They simply didn't dare. Because none of them had any idea what he might do, and none of them were willing to take a chance like that. But of course, he's not in charge, and the wars are raging with a high price for people on all sides and many around the world. After a few days off to reflect and evaluate what's happening, and seeing thousands of people in the streets of London, Sydney, Paris, and even much smaller towns like Dearborn, Michigan, it makes you wonder what's next and who's next. The FBI has issued direct warnings now that terrorists, many of whom, whether they admit the truth or not, walked into this country illegally because Joe Biden and the Democrats opened the border to the tune of somewhere between 7 and 15 million people, and that swarm of unknowns came in in only about 32 months, a ridiculous, a ridiculously short time with great consequence. FBI Director Christopher Wray issued that warning while speaking over the weekend, and he was talking about people here in America, not those in far off countries, the people right here, because suddenly the lies that Trump supporters and imaginary white supremacists are the biggest threat to America are being pushed out by the truth, and the truth is radical Islam is still a very big threat to America, maybe the biggest as we start the day. Listen to this. In this heightened environment, there's no question we're seeing an increase in reported threats, and we've got to be on the lookout, especially for lone actors who may take inspiration from recent events to commit violence of their own. So I'd encourage you to stay vigilant because as the first line of defense protecting our communities, you're often the first to see the signs that someone may be mobilizing to violence. I'd also ask you to continue sharing any intelligence or observations you may have. And on our end, we're committed to doing the same so that together we can safeguard our communities. Yeah, you're the first line of defense. You have to speak up. You have to say, hey, who'd we let in this country? And are they here to kill us? The question of how did this happen is persistent, with plenty of people questioning who dropped the ball. It's a fair question when we talk about the attacks in Israel. I mean, between the United States, our European allies, and Israel itself, of course, we have about the best intelligence in the world, but somehow the low-tech assault using hang gliders, pickup trucks, and inflatable boats went undetected in its planning and its execution for possibly two years or more. For two years or more, and yet nobody can accept responsibility. We live in a world where those in charge are always standing around pointing fingers and trying to fix blame somewhere, anywhere, and act like little kids who got caught with a box full of crayons coloring the wall. Yeah, is there anyone left in government that can admit that they blew it? I mean, Joe Biden has no idea whether he's right or wrong or even awake, but the rest of them do. Where are the adults I heard so much about when Joe Biden was coming into to the office? Listen. I want to play you some remarks that you made just eight days before the attack and get your reaction on the other side. 
The Middle East region is quieter today than it has been in two decades. Now, challenges remain. Iran's nuclear weapons program, the tensions between Israelis and Palestinians. But the amount of time that I have to spend on crisis and conflict in the Middle East today compared to any of my predecessors going back to 9-11 is significantly reduced. Jake, why was your assessment there so far off the mark? Well, first, Kristen, I made those comments in the context of developments in the wider Middle East region over the last few years after two decades that involved a civil war in Yemen and a massive humanitarian catastrophe, a civil war in Syria and a massive refugee crisis, an invasion and insurgency in Iraq, a NATO military operation in Libya, Iranian-backed attacks on both Saudi and the UAE, uh, as well as many other steps, inc including the rise of a terrorist caliphate that actually occupied a huge amount of territory. The sentence before what you just played, I said, in fact, that this was for now mm -hmm. and that it could all change. Well, the sentence you should have heard from somebody else after you made those comments and Israel was attacked and bloodied and people were murdered is, you're fired. That's the sentence you should have heard, punk. It's a joke. The whole administration's a joke, and as we have all known from the moment we first heard of the hideous and grotesque attacks on a music festival where hundreds of unarmed civilians were slaughtered, to the killing of children and the elderly inside their homes, we're teetering on the brink of a much wider regional war where the casualties will, much, will mount much quicker and the hair trigger of the world can be put to the biggest test of our lifetimes. Iran says it will not stand on the sidelines, and the usual warmongers are thrilled with the idea, whether they say so or not, but some just say so, like Lindsey Graham, ready to push America into a regional war with Iran. He's all for it, of course. Listen. Iran, if you escalate this war, we're coming for you. Are you effectively poised to declare war on Iran? That's very strong language. I, I am poised to use military force to destroy the source of funding for Hamas and Hezbollah. The idea that Iran read about this operation in the paper or on television is laughable. 93% of Hezbollah and Has uh, Hamas's money comes from Iran. They're the source of the problem. They're the great evil. So if Hezbollah escalates against Israel, it will be because Iran told them to. Then Iran, you're in the crosshairs of the United States and Israel. And honestly, if Iran breaches that front and enters the war in a more open fashion, what choice would we have? There's no question that Iran has been working with and funding Hamas and Gaza, Hezbollah and Lebanon for decades, but now they're making noise about not sitting idly by, not sitting on the sidelines. Well, that would create a much more critical situation. And as we speak, the war is about to expand in the coming days. We'll talk about that as soon as I come back. Good to be back, by the way. A lot of Important things to talk about. Nice to see you this morning. Nice to be with you. It's the Steve Gruber Show. You can find out more at stevegruber.com. stevegruber.com. I'll be right back.